All right, let's do it. This is the 49ers Report. Hope all of you out there are getting set to have a fantastic weekend. I'm Chase Senior, bringing you this video from home because I'm off today, but there's way too much to talk about to not do a show. So coming your way on the program, Brock Purdy surgery update. Could the 49ers sign Baker Mayfield given the uncertainty at that quarterback position because of the injuries to Purdy and Trey Lance? And we're going to do a 49ers draft meetings tracker for the first time to take a look at who San Francisco has met with at the NFL combine and some of the all-star and bowl games so far first make sure you subscribe to the channel here the 49ers report is 70 people away from 79,000 subscribers if you're unfamiliar with us we do shows I do shows every single day here on the channel so if you want to stay up to date with all things Niners year round with daily videos make sure you subscribe and lock us in by hitting that sub button down below let's begin with Brock Purdy here according to Jeff Howe who works for the Athletic Purdy is going to get surgery next week. We talked about this earlier this week after John Lynch had met with the media from Indianapolis at the NFL Scouting Combine. He had said that if Purdy's surgeon, who was traveling to Purdy's home state of Arizona, saw that Purdy's elbow and the swelling in it had gone down, that he could undergo surgery next week. Looks as though that's going to be the case. He was supposed to originally get surgery on February 22nd. It got pushed back because of the inflammation in that elbow. Here's what Jeff Howell had to say, is that Purdy expected to have elbow surgery next week according to two sources with direct knowledge of the situation who requested anonymity uh, because they were not authorized to speak publicly about it. Purdy was initially scheduled to have surgery last month, but the procedure was delayed due to ongoing swelling. The belief here is that Purdy will need six months to recover, but the 49ers won't truly know the timeline until after the surgery because they're not sure if it's going to be a full reconstruction or not. Week one of the regular season will be between September 7th and September 11th, so it's far too early to know if Purdy will be ready in that time frame, which I've continued to say. I'd say that the odds are stacked against Purdy for being ready week one. You have to be cautious with an elbow injury that's this serious and if it's the full Tommy John reconstruction, he's going to be out for maybe a calendar month. How continued by saying that could put Trey Lance in line to start the opener for the second consecutive season. He had two surgeries, though, on that ankle injury. He's expected to return to action for San Francisco during their offseason workout program in the spring. So this 49ers roster, it's loaded with talent basically everywhere even going into free agency, knowing that the Niners are going to lose some of these players. But once again, the big question mark is at that quarterback spot. This is an organization that's been snake bitten with injuries at that position. And it's unfortunate because over the last decade, they've had a lot of success in Kyle Shanahan's regime of late. They've had a lot of success to Two straight NFC Championship games, three NFC title games over the last four years, including that Super Bowl appearance. Look, it's far too early to tell if Purdy's going to be ready week one. Trey Lance is so inexperienced. John Lynch even said that they're going to scour the veteran quarterback market. We're far from knowing what the quarterback outlook is going to be for the Niners, and that's why you got to subscribe to the channel because we're going to be talking about this quarterback position up until they make that decision. And even when they make that decision, of course, there's still going to be a lot to uncover. As for Baker Mayfield here, is he going to sign with the Niners in free agency? Once again, this from Jeff Howe. He looked at Baker Mayfield's current situation and said that his best options could be returning to the Rams or joining the 49ers or the Denver Broncos. All three of those teams, he said, have successful offensive-minded head coaches and starting quarterbacks who missed time due to injury during the 2022 season. Or if you're talking about the Broncos and Russell Wilson, Russ is just weird. At a minimum, Hal said, Mayfield would get an extra season of strong coaching in Los Angeles with Sean McVay, in San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan, or in Denver with Sean Payton. And if the starter goes down again, it put Mayfield in a better situation to succeed if he's called upon and he also said that Mayfield ideally would like to compete for a starting quarterback role so how does this involve the 49ers well if Purdy's injured he's already not going to play throughout OTAs he's not going to practice throughout training camp he's not going to play in the preseason I'd say best case scenario and once again the odds are stacked against him he'll be ready for week one 
but I don't think he's going to be ready for week one. So do you bring in a veteran like Baker Mayfield on an affordable contract, knowing that he has pedigree, former number one overall pick? Can you get him back to how he was playing in 2020 when he led the Browns to the playoffs in a playoff victory for the first time since the early 1990s when Bill Belichick was their coach, knowing that a lot of quarterbacks who have played in Kyle Shanahan's scheme have played well? And competition brings the best out of everybody, right? It could bring that competitive fire out of Baker Mayfield. He needs no help in bringing out that competitive fire. He seems to always have it. But could he push Trey Lance a little bit? And if Lance does struggle, if he gets hurt again, if he doesn't master the offense, if he continues to struggle with some of the things that he struggled with, lack of accuracy, lack of consistency, then at least you have a veteran there that you're not paying a bunch of money to, hopefully, ideally, in Baker Mayfield. And could this scheme elevate him a little bit with all the playmakers around him in Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and you'll be able to still contend for an NFC West championship and with the NFC being absolutely wide open because the Eagles are going to have a combined 11 starters hitting free agency do you put yourself in a position to make a deep playoff run? It's an interesting name for sure. Mayfield has struggled with accuracy, which is something that was his strong suit at Oklahoma. But a good coach brought the best out of him in Lincoln Riley. Could Kyle Shanahan do the same? I think it would be fascinating. I'd like to see the Niners bring in a veteran, whether it be him a guy like Jacoby Brissett, shoot, I'd make the call to Tom Brady as I've talked about. I'd make a trade call to the Packers for Aaron Rodgers because you have to capitalize on the Super Bowl window here. So that's the latest on Baker Mayfield. Now let's get to the Niners draft tracker. This is a combination of players that the Niners have met with at different all-star games and some quote-unquote senior bowls. There's the Reese's senior bowl, but then there are other senior bowls. So keep that in mind in addition to the NFL Combine throughout this week. I got to give a shout out to Steph Sanchez for putting this list together. I'm going to put the link for her tracker. It's a Google Doc, an Excel sheet in the description of this video. And on that, there's credit to everybody who's reported on some of the Niners meetings with some of these players up to this point. And of note here from the NFL Combine, the 49ers have been meeting with a lot of safeties as well as tight ends. Is that kind of a look into the Niners moving on from Jimmy Ward? And I've said time and time again, at some point, you have to plan ahead at tight end. You have to plan ahead in general. That's what good businesses do. That's what good football teams do. You have to try to find the George Kittle replacement for when he either becomes too expensive, too old, or if he goes down with an injury. Because tight end two has been a problem with this football team for a little while. San Francisco seems to agree. Meeting with a lot of tight ends so far. So shout out to Steph for putting this together, as well as Brad from SF Niners. Not only is he an offensive line guru, him and Steph have been killing it for content creators from the NFL Scout and Combine. We have a team there at the Combine as well, so also shout out to Tom Downey and Sam Brown. Boots on the ground doing work in Indy. So the 49ers have 11 picks in the 2023 NFL Draft. Here are those selections. No picks in the first round, no picks in the second. Could they trade up? In the second round, maybe. The cost for trading up in the first round would be too much, I believe. Three consecutive picks in the third round, 99, 100, 101. You can get some starters there and really good players. You have three picks in the fifth round, 157 overall, 166 overall, and 173 overall. A pick in the sixth, 216, and then three seventh round picks, 224, 249, and 255. So that's 11 total picks in this upcoming draft. And for the 49ers, yeah, it's unfortunate. You don't have a first rounder. You traded that away for Trey Lance. You don't have some other draft capital or a second rounder because you traded those away for Christian McCaffrey, which ended up being worth it because McCaffrey was stellar. But for this organization with John Lynch, Adam Peters, and then formerly Rand Carthen, They've been able to identify and pick some really good players on day two, day three. And they're going to have to continue to do that because when you pay big money to some players like Trent Williams, soon Nick Bosa, hopefully soon Brandon Ayuk, Fred Warner, George Kittle, the list goes on. You need to be able to find impact players on their rookie deals. Talano Hufanga, Diamador Lenore, 
hopefully in 2023, a Drake Jackson. That's the power of having a quarterback on their rookie contract, Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. That's why those picks are so critical, and that's why it's a strength for the 49ers, and hopefully it continues to be a strength. So here are all the players who the 49ers have met with, either at the Combine or at some of those bowl and all-star games. There's a lot of them, so... Sit back and here you go. Safety Alex Cook from Washington. Cornerback Jaleel Brown from Central Connecticut. Linebacker Austin Ijiaki, I believe is how you say it, from UNLV. If I mispronounce that, I apologize. Linebacker Deshaun White from Oklahoma. Defensive tackle Jack Daly from Bryant. Defensive end Kashawn Banks from San Diego State. Linebacker Otis Reese from Ole Miss. Running back EJ Burgess from Franklin Pierce. Running back Taj Davidson from uh, Taj Davidson, I think from Langston. Offensive tackle Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse. Cornerback Julius Brents from Kansas State. Linebacker Mikkel Jones from Syracuse. Tight end Jamal Turner from Toledo. Tight end EJ Jenkins from Georgia Tech. Wide receiver Tyler Hudson from Louisville. Defensive lineman DeAnthony Jones from Houston. Quarterback Tim Dermorat from Fordham, defensive lineman Jeffrey Johnson from Oklahoma, defensive end Spencer Wage from North Dakota State, cornerback Christian Braswell from Rutgers, cornerback Jeremy Lucian from Vanderbilt, cornerback Tyler Richardson from Tiffin, safety Devad Wilson from UCF, safety Darius Joyner from Duke, safety Tanner McAllister from Ohio State, tight end Tyler Roberts from Merrimack College, wide receiver Mac Hippenhammer, might be one of the best names in the draft, Miami of Ohio, quarterback Fred Payton from Mercer, wide receiver Joshua Okek. Kuchu, that is terrible pronunciation, Fort Hayes State, linebacker Deontay Johnson from Toledo, running back Ellis Merriweather from UMass, offensive lineman Kevin Toot from Pace University, defensive end Marcus Haynes from Old Dominion, linebacker Mohamed Diabati from Utah, or Diabati, defensive lineman Deshwan Johnson from Toledo, defensive end Kai Thomas from Colorado, defensive lineman Jamar Edwards from James Madison, defensive end Philip Huff from Nevada, defensive tackle Wes Moyeye from Rocky Mountain College, running back Casimir Allen from UCLA, linebacker Vendarius Cohen from Maryland, wide receiver Nico Remigio from Fresno State, cornerback Dennis Barnes from UTEP, linebacker Abraham Bouplan, Bouplan from Marshall, uh, a fullback edge, which is very, very interesting, Derek Parrish from Houston, wide receiver Thayer Thomas from NC State, defensive lineman Viliami Fajoko from San Jose State, right out there in the uh, Bay Area, defensive lineman Tavius Robinson from Mississippi, defensive lineman Byron Young from Tennessee, linebacker Cam Jones from Indiana, defensive lineman Nesta Jade Silvera from Arizona State, defensive lineman Zach Pickens from South Carolina, defensive lineman Dante Stills from West Virginia, defensive lineman DJ Dale from Alabama, defensive lineman Isaiah McGuire from Missouri, defensive lineman Akena Enekuku from Rice. Again, some of these pronunciations I'm butchering. Linebacker Jaden Woodbay from Boston College. Defensive lineman Adi Tomiwa Ede Bawarie from Northwestern. The chances I got that right, 5%. Linebacker Jalen Graham from Purdue. Tight end Daniel Barker from Michigan State. Center Shiren Rogers from Southeast Missouri State. Safety Jamie Robinson from Florida State. Safety J.L. Skinner, interesting prospect out of Boise State. He has crazy length. Safety Daniel Scott from Cal. Safety Jair Brown from Penn State, a player who I really like. His instinctual feeling of the game is fantastic. You might have to trade up into the second round to get him third round. He'd be awesome value. Gervarius Owens from Houston. Wide receiver Jonathan Mingo from Ole Miss. Wide receiver Dontavion Wicks from Virginia. Wide receiver Puka Nacial, I believe, from BYU. Uh, wide receiver Tank Dell from Houston. Really like him as a player. Tight end Davis Allen from Clemson. He talked about 
George Kittle, we put that up on our shorts page on YouTube, him talking about him and some of these other players uh, from the NFL Scouting Combine. Their interviews available on YouTube shorts as well, TikTok-style videos on the YouTube channel. I love this one. Quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson. I mentioned him several weeks ago. Ideal backup to get late. I wouldn't mind Jake Kaner or Stetson ben Bennett. As of right now, by the way, the 49ers haven't met formally with Jake Kaner. So, somewhat interesting there. Defensive back Jay Ward from LSU. Makai Blackman, the defensive back from USC. Darius Rush from South Carolina defensive back. Riley Moss from Iowa. He's a defensive back as well. Defensive back Alex Austin from Oregon State. Tight end Sam Laporta from Iowa. He speaks with George Kittle often. He said that in an interview that we did with him from the Scouting Combine. That's up on YouTube shorts. Tight end Zach Kuntz from Old Dominion. Demario Douglas, the wide receiver out of Liberty. Tight end Josh Weil from Cincinnati. Brenton Strange, the tight end from Penn State. Dude is a load at that tight end spot. Huge and physical. Quarterback Jaron Hall from BYU. Shout out to Steve Young. Tight end Leonard Taylor from Cincinnati. Wide receiver Michael Wilson from Stanford. Tight end Braden Willis from Oklahoma. Wide receiver Jacob Copeland from Maryland. Jason Brownie, or Brownlee, excuse me, from Southern Mississippi. He's a wide receiver as well. Jake Bobo from UCLA, another great name there. Grant DeBose from Charlotte, a wide receiver. Andre Oisivas from Princeton. Shout out to the Ivy League. My dad went to Brown, unfortunately, as you can see with these pronunciations. I didn't get that Ivy League knowledge. Defensive back Anthony Johnson from Iowa State. Defensive back Anthony Johnson from Virginia. He's Anthony Johnson Jr. Wide receiver Jalen Wayne from South Alabama. Cameron Latou from Alabama. I put that interview up on my Twitter page, at Chase underscore Senior. Wide receiver Xavier Hutchinson from Iowa State. Safety Tyreek Jones from Boise State. And cornerback Khalif Halasi from Western Kentucky. That complete list is also in the description of this video. Uh, keep in mind that the NFL Combine schedule. Today, defensive backs and special teamers were set to work out. Tomorrow... It's quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends on Saturday. And then Sunday, running back and offensive linemen. So the 49ers haven't had interviews or those players haven't released information at those respective positions outside of DB if they've interviewed with the 49ers or not. So once again, uh, if I butchered some of those names, I apologize. I will be better. I promise you that. But wanted to give you a full breakdown of the 49ers draft tracker right here on the show. Don't forget to subscribe and keep it locked here on the 49ers report for videos every single day. We appreciate all of you for watching. Hope you all have a great Friday and a great weekend.